Hi, welcome. Welcome to the Senvet Credit Scheme. In the Senvet Credit Scheme, I am going to discuss one of the most important areas. One of the most important in the sense, you know, there are three basic and major definitions. The definition of capital goods rule 2 A, definition of inputs rule 2 K and the definition of input service rule 2 L. These form the triangle and which is one of the most important areas which I am going to discuss today. And based on these definitions, uh, you will be able to even get the questions solved. You will get practical questions based on these definitions. So, I will make them so simple because maybe you have heard, uh, read, gone through the definitions, you find that the very clumsy, lengthy, complicated sometimes or difficult to retain. See, everything we have to put, we, have, we, are, we should be in a position to put in a nutshell and we will not be able to put in a basket these definitions, but I will put them. I will put them and give it to you just like a, a, a snake, very dangerous, very big, but if you can put it in under the box, we are safe. So, even a concept, a definition, we should be in a, able to, we should be in a position to put in a carved one in a shape, you will be able to remember, we will be able to recall. I will give you the a methodology also to remember, how to remember the definitions. It is a very easy way of doing this. See, first of all, what I do is, I do the definition of capital goods. Got it? So, what is capital goods? Uh, look at this, you will be able to do it. You are able to see the definition, I have written there. Have you seen this? Look at the definition, you are able to see that look at the definition, capital goods. So, the capital goods you see, look at the pink one. So, look at the pink one and B, C, D, E like that na. The definition of capital goods is in A, B, C, D. Of course, E is not there. Let us erase. So, the definition, entire definition of capital goods, though it looks lengthy, difficult to remember, something like that maybe you thought of, but do not think. If you have ever, if, if you suppose you have never tried it, it is a blessing in disguise because ignorance is a bliss, because now you do it. The entire definition of capital goods in four parts A, B, C, D, that is it. Done? And A part is capital goods for both manufacturer and service provider. And B, C, they are actually, they are capital goods only to specific service providers, specified service providers. It is not even to all service providers. That too, they are talking about motor vehicles, particularly where motor vehicles can be capital goods, where they cannot be. Okay, okay. In the first part A, wherever whatever they talked about that is common to both manufacturer and service provider. And D is simply is talking about their spares and components, wherever a particular item is a capital goods and automatically its spares, accessories and components will be automatically qualified as capital goods. D is nothing but clarificatory and what about A is the main thing which is containing the list of goods. and they are capital goods to manufacturers and they are they can be capital goods to service provider also and extra there are certain specific service providers for whom uh, the motor vehicles for given purposes say for uh, goods and passengers B and C deal with. So, that is it A, B, C, D that is it entire capital goods definition is in A, B, C, D once I discuss and also discuss the areas where there is amendment in 2016, because there are some a few significant amendments also, we will discuss that are them also. So, automatically you are ready for practical questions. So, start, let us start with. So, look at this goods 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
do you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, there are 8 varieties of goods which have been specified as capital goods, but remember one thing here what is capital goods from the commerce or accountancy point of view, say from the accounting standards point of view what is capital goods is totally irrelevant for Senver credit scheme. So, because this is an exhaustive definition in one sense whatever they have specified here whatever they say in the Senver credit scheme they have to it has to be taken in total as capital goods. And in general sense in commerce and accountancy what we know or what we think about capital goods we should not consider. Okay? Exactly whatever they have specified in the definition these we have to take for the purpose of same right credit scheme. So, we cannot import the concept of capital goods from others. Of course, mostly there is there is a lot of similarity because capital goods by nature they are durable long lasting normally they do not used up, they do not get used up in one go. If it is used up in one go, it is called input, it is consumed up. So, where it is not consumed, where it is used and its use is for a longer duration. So, durable automatically that comes under the category of ca capital goods. The concept, basic concept is remains the same whether you do it under accountancy or under Senvat credit scheme, but wherever there is a deviation this we should stick to the definition given under Senvat credit rules. Okay? Come on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. See there are 8 categories you are able to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These we have to see. First one is they have given a list of goods relating to of course, capital goods given in certain chapters under the Central Excise Tariff Act. Central Excise Tariff Act has you know 98 chapters containing varieties of goods, but these chapters mainly the chapters specified here are mainly relating to capital goods. Say for example, chapter number 82, 84 you see 82, chapter number 82, 80. 4, 85, 90, chapter 680405, 68, means 680405 means 04 means 04 is heading number, chapter number is 68, heading number 04 and chapter number 68 means chapter number 68 heading number 5. So, in chapter 68 only heading number 4 and 5 are considered. What about other chapters 82, 84, 85, 90 full the whole chapter all heading numbers 1 to n 1 to n heading numbers all are relevant. Okay? All are relevant 82, 84, 85, 90 entire chapter whatever be the goods specified in those chapters they are all put together they are capital goods for the purpose of definition here. Okay? for the purpose of definition here. So, whether you have to learn these chapters I do not know, I cannot say, but keep doing practice makes a man perfect, keep doing you will be able to remember 82, 84, 85, 90 and 68, 04 and 68, 05 and recently they have added one more thing that is uh, uh, relating to wagons, railway wagons. 860692, which means chapter 86, heading number 6, subheading number 92. So, under this wagons, they, this uh, goods train wagon that is called wagons. So, these have been added in the list of capital goods, these are also capital goods. So, 82, 84, 85, I will come back. What is there? What are the goods specified, specified in 82? What are there in 84, 85, 90? I will, I will give you the list because they are not talking about the, they are not giving the list simply they are spelling out, they are giving out the numbers and what is there in that number 82, what is their number in the number 84, these things we will do, we will discuss, I will come back. And second one is look at the pollution control equipment. So, pollution control equipment that is also capital goods, you will get credit and next components, spares, accessories, etcetera. 
of the above. So, all chapter numbers 80 to 84 etcetera plus pollution control equipment, they are capital goods and whatever spares, components or accessories required for those two categories above, they are also capital goods. So, first three categories are capital goods, very easy to remember. Hmm? And next molds, dies, jigs and fixtures molds, dies, jigs and fixtures. So, these are something like loose tools, not heavy equipment, loose tools. Molds, dies, jigs, fixtures, etcetera and refractories and refractory materials. What do you mean by refractory? These refractories are like bricks, say brick, you know brick, on the bricks building is made. They are like bricks, they are put on the side walls they serve as side walls in the blast furnace. Inside the blast furnace, you know, in steel plant, the iron is melted and it passes through what you can say, the blast furnace in the liquid form. Iron melted in a liquid form at, at a very, very high temperature. When it is flowing through, it is very difficult. Everything will be flown, burnt up but these refractory materials are put on the side walls. They bear the brunt of all the heat, still they survive for some time, okay? because they cannot survive for long. There is a relaxation. It is said that even if they are not in the not available in the next financial year, still you are eligible to take the remaining 50 percent credit. Okay? So, spares, components, etcetera, ACS DMR 68 you study under rule 4, conditions for availing the invert credit. So, here refractory and refractory materials, they are also capital goods and plus tubes, pipes and fittings, tubes, pipes and fittings, they are also capital goods and storage tank, whether it is iron of iron, steel or plastic or rubber, fiber, whatever it is, storage tanks pipes and fittings, tubes, pipes and fittings and next vehicles. You see, vehicles are motor, vehicles are capital goods, but other than, you see, vehicles are motor capital goods other than they have given a list. What is the list they have given? You see, 87, chapter 87, 0 to means heading number 2, heading number 3, heading number 4 and heading number 11, 2, 3, 4, 11. So, except those 2, 3, 4, 11, all others are capital goods. What are these about? But including dumpers and tippers, tipper, see unloading automatic, see tipper means is a vehicle where unloading automatically takes place, no labor is required, it lifts and material is down. So, it lifts like this, back side is lifted like this, that is called tipper. Dumpers, very heavy equipment, they are used in earth uh, excavation, etcetera, etcetera, earth removing, etcetera, etcetera. Dumpers. Dumpers and tippers, wherever they are used, they are still capital goods, even though they fall under say 3, 4, some, somewhere around. Okay. So, 0 2, 0 3, 0 4, they fall around 0 4, dumpers and tippers in that chapter, probably in the, in the chapter 87, wherever they occur, but to that extent they are capital goods, except dumpers and tippers, all the goods specified in a chapter 87 under heading number 2, heading number 3, heading number 4 and heading number 11, these are not capital goods, but dumpers and tippers, even though they fall under the, the above, they are capital goods. But except these four categories, four heading numbers, all other goods are capital goods under chapter 87. Okay. What are the goods under 2, 3, 4, 11? I will come, I will come and discuss. The important thing is there are eight categories. What I mean to say is number one, goods specified in the uh, specified chapters under Tariff Act 82, 84, 85, 90, 68, 04, 68, 05 
and 860962 sorry 860692 that is about wagons recently added these are capital goods <coughs> okay and of course any equipment used for pumping of water any equipment is used for pumping of water water pumping sometimes a lot of water is required by for an industry and that much of water how do you get that much of water pumping activity so for water pumping if you use any equipment that is also capital goods so pumping of water that has been given so recently a wagons under chapter 860692 and equipment used in pumping of water maybe outside the factory doesn't matter doesn't make any difference because the pump water is used captively within the factory so these are the goods so first of all what we have to say just uh, give me a minute so let us see before we go for b c d what are there what is there in b c d first of all let us finish part a in part a we have we have got eight categories of goods and let us have the details of eight categories so what are they number 1 chapter number 82 chapter 82 chapter 84 chapter 85 chapter 90 chapter 6804 and 6805 under chapter 6804 and 05 first chapter number 82 what is there in 82 this is about tools of course tools implements cutlery tools implements cutlery etc cutlery etc so chapter's name and chapter number 84 it is about boilers and other machinery mechanical machinery equipment etc boilers nuclear reactors even nuclear reactors are here etc mainly mainly most of the machinery fall under chapter 84 that's the reason why all the goods specified in chapter 84 and 82 are capital goods because they are durable entities chapter number 85 mainly about electrical equipment electrical equipment say the heading is like this electrical install equipment installations etc etc okay all electrical equipments photos etc etc next 90 optical photo optical equipment photo related equipment and uh, measuring checking instruments measuring tools etc checking instruments etc chapter number 90 and 6804 so 04 is about grinding wheels it is about grinding wheels so grind grinding knives etc they are sharpened through the grinding wheels so 6805 is about abrasive powder dictionary you can get the meanings dictionary meanings are google search through google search you will get the pictures also you will get the clear picture so chapters these are chapters and 690692 chapter 69 recently added na sorry 86 860692 
this is about wagons. Wagons means this one, these are wagons. See this, wagons means goods train, these are called these are called wagons without engine. So, with if it if an engine is attached, then it becomes a goods train, otherwise it is wagons. So, these are added now, these are also capital goods. So, <coughs> equipment used in of course, pumping of water, if you use them anything for using in pumping of water, that is also to be there. Okay. Uh, next, electricity, if I read outside the factory, etcetera, etcetera, motor vehicles providing, yes, okay. Next, these are the categories 82, 84, 85. Please, you read, but whether you have to mug up, I do not know, I, I cannot say, I cannot say. But you read number of times, so 2, 3 times, 4 times you will be able to remember 82 tools, cutlery etcetera, 84 main boilers equipment, mecha mechanical all machine equipment etcetera, all mechanical equipment that is 84, 85 electrical, 90 photo, studio related equipment etcetera, you know? optical, photo, measuring, checking instruments 90. And 6804, 6805 only heading number 4 and heading number 5. They are about abrasive powder and grinding wheels. 6804 grinding wheels, 5 is abrasive powder, etcetera, and wagon 6086. 860692. It is a little painful job, but unfortunately, this is not an open book system. You have to learn to some extent, to a large extent, and you you can reproduce. Of course, if you can reproduce, okay. If you cannot reproduce, you don't have to worry. But to the extent that you can remember, that is an added advantage. Okay. So I have given you the list of the things that that are qualifying, that that are qualified as capital goods. But the thing is, what about the other vehicles? They are talking about vehicles, no? Okay. They are talking about vehicles. Vehicles are also capital goods. What are the other than? They have given a list other than those under 87 chapter number 8702 heading number 2 8703 8704 they are in series 234 2 3 4 and again then only 11 8711 say 2 1 1 means 2 now 1 1 it is a 2 wheeler something like that. So, I can write here motor vehicles, 1 1 means 2 wheeler, motor vehicles, motor cycles. Okay. These are motor cycles and 88704 you can say uh, vehicles, heavy vehicles, trucks etcetera, carrying goods, transport of goods, used in transport of goods, trucks etcetera. Trans used in transport of goods and 8.3, I think these are four wheelers, something like cars, not more than 10 persons, no, they are carrying not more than 10 persons, four wheelers, cars, etcetera. The 8.702 must be carrying more than 10 persons, bus, etcetera carrying more than 10 persons. Let me anyway check up before I finalize. So, motor cycles, goods transport, okay, four, buses, etcetera, okay, cars, etcetera, done. Whether you remember, you learn what you, you should do, that is up to you, but I am giving you the information. So, but uh, including tippers and dumpers, maybe they are falling under 8704, 
but still to that extent they are capital goods. So, this part A which is talking about capital goods is relating to all manufacturers both manufacturing service providers there is no qualification and qualification is coming here. So, what what does it talk talk about what is it that is talking about. So, these are the goods they have given a list, but important thing is under Senvat credit scheme use is the base used very very important thing is goods used by manufacturer in a factory used in a factory obviously manufacturer used in a factory or used outside factory sometimes you may have to use outside factory in a factory or outside the factory you see that in a factory outside the factory and used by service provider. So, for service provider used by service provider used by manufacturer or used by service provider. For service provider there is no escape the simple qualification is you should use it directly for providing output service used by service provider simply for providing output service output service. So, no indirect use is not qualified if he is using directly to provide output service then it is capital goods otherwise no. A chartered accountants firm is using vacuum cleaners to clean the carpets etcetera. Okay? So, to clean the carpets it is using vacuum cleaners. These vacuum cleaners are not capital goods for the cap chartered accountant. Even I say if, if the chartered accountant uses the office uses air conditioners they may not qualify as capital goods. I believe they are not capital goods because he is not using them for providing output service. But whereas, cold storage plant suppose it is providing some service. So, for a cold storage plant whatever air conditioning is there because certain temperature is to be maintained. So, that is it is using equipment air conditioning equipment that is capital goods. Similarly, vacuum cleaners are not capital goods for a chartered accountant but vacuum cleaners are capital goods for a service provider of cleaning services. His job is cleaning, he will go from office to office on contract basis he will be getting the offices cleaned. So, cleaning services, housekeeping services for housekeeping services or cleaning services vacuum cleaner is capital goods because that is being used directly to clean cleaning is a service to clean the floor they are used to clean the carpets they are used. So, that is a capital good. So, for a service provider there is no escape you should use it directly for providing output service otherwise no, but for a manufacturer you see there is a lot of relaxation. What is that relaxation? You should use it in the factory that is it if you use something in the factory that is enough it is not necessary that you should use it to produce something. Say some machine is used through the machine the production is coming out that is capital goods, but uh, you have installed some air conditioning system AC is a AC is there or water cooler is there air conditioner is there air cooler is there are they producing anything no, but still they are capital goods lighting system equipment for proper lighting, lighting system is there, lighting installation, electrical installations are there. All electrical installations used in the factory they are capital goods, they are not producing anything, they, he is not using them directly to produce anything, he is using them just they are enabling the production, Pro proper lighting is necessary to produce that is it. So, that is the major difference between uh, 
what is capital goods for a manufacturer and what is capital goods for a service provider because for a service provider obviously he should use them directly to produce service to provide service whereas for a manufacturer he need not use directly if he uses in the factory that is enough so goods used in the factory and uh, let me for your benefit or for your advantage let me read out the language so 1 to 8 goods used number 1 in the factory of the manufacturer of the final products in the factory of the manufacturer of the final product means used in the factory that is enough earlier what was there you know there was a restriction that restriction other than but does not include any equipment or appliance used in an office does not include any equipment or appliance used in an office that was the qualification so suppose factory has some attached office that is always possible some in that attached office whatever capital goods or equipment appliance or equipment is used for example air conditioner that is not capital goods of course purely office somewhere else that is not capital goods because it should be used in the factory but in the factory but other than those used in the office means factory but not those used in the office means attached to the factory but now the qualification has been lifted removed so as per the latest defa amendment under uh, in 2016 they have lifted they have removed that so anything used in the factory of the manufacturer of final products suppose some office is attached to the factory some air conditioner is used in the office now that is also that also qualifies as capital goods because even though it is used in the office that is capital goods because it is attached to the factory anything not attached to the factory of course it cannot be treated as capital goods for example your factory is here and somewhere else at a far at, at a at some other place some office is there so that has nothing to do with this but some office is attached to the factory whatever is used in this office that is also capital goods now that is also capital goods now anything used in the office is capital goods so far as the office is attached to the factory so when the question comes in the examination office equipment or equipment used in the office you can take an assumption i presume that the office is attached to the factory suppose they mention specifically office uh, attached to the factory and office at a uh, office elsewhere elsewhere means not eligible and attached to the factory eligible so that way you have to so understand capital in the factory but at the same time outside the factory sometimes capital goods outside the factory also you may be using what is it capital goods used in power plant cap 2 power plant cap 2 power plant means the power power is used the power generated in the power plant is used captively in the factory not sold outside not used outside but used in the factory to the extent of use suppose it is partly used for the factory partly used for the other thing means maybe partly that is allowed so used outside the factory that will become a dispute of course power plant established outside the factory but if the power is drawn to use in the factory then that is also capital goods and recently they have also added goods used outside the factory for pumping of water pumping of water for water pumping this is a very big activity there was a re, there was a representation from the industry and government immediately obliged yes even if, if even if some equipment is used in pumping the water where the water is used for in the factory or for the factory purpose then we allow so <coughs> let me read out outside the factory 1 and 1A outside the factory is 1A used 1 in the factory or used 1A outside the factory. So, for the outside the factory for generation of electricity or pumping of water for captive use for captive use within the factory captive use is very important if the use is not within the factory if the water water produced pumped 
or the electricity generated is not used in the factory, there is no use, it cannot qualify as capital goods. Okay? So, number 2, I have already told you, one number 2 for service provider, 1A, one, 1 and 1A one for manufacturer and 2 is for service provider, it says used for providing output service, it should be used directly. So, that is the use. So, capital goods means this is the definition, part A. So, these all the 8 items are capital goods for a manufacturer under 1 used in the factory, 1A used outside the factory. For user outside the factory, simply electricity generating equipment and water pumping equipment, nothing else is qualified. And whereas, for a service provider, absolutely it should be used for providing output service. 1, 1A, 2, part A is over. So, part 2 is very simple. I think part A you are able to get, please check up part A and I am going to remove this and then move for part B, C, D. Okay? So, part B and part C I am moving ahead with. What is there in Okay. This is part A and what about part B? And what about part C? Part C and D is simple, very easy. D part is simply it is talking about spares and components, B, C, D. So, part A we have seen what is what are capital goods common okay? and C part B, C, D, C part B, C, D. So, part B, C, D actually part B and C are talking about motor vehicles for specified services, for a limited specific services, these motor vehicles qualify as what we can say capital goods. For a manufacturer, no, not at all possible. So, what are they? What is the list? Let me put the list here. The list is number 1. Motor vehicles designed for transportation of goods including their chassis, including their chassis means incomplete. Chassis registered in the name of the service provider. So, they must be registered in the name of the service provider. If they are not registered, suppose you are a service provider specified here, and but it is the vehicle is not in your name. Suppose you are a sole proprietor or partnership firm, it should be registered in the name of the sole proprietor or the or any of the partners. If it is a company, it should be registered in the name of the company because company is a separate legal entity, otherwise no. So, registration in your name, the service provider's name is a must. And what are they? So, transportation of goods. So, it is talking about goods transport. So, goods transporting vehicles. Goods transporting vehicles. So, goods transporting vehicles and what are they? Number 1 is renting, 1, 2 and 3. Say, the, if these vehicles are rented, renting purpose, you have vehicles and you are renting. If they are used for renting purpose, renting is a service. So, they are capital goods for you. If the service is renting, giving on rent, so it is a, it, it does, that particular vehicle is capital goods. Actually, that, that particular vehicle comes under 
uh, chapter 8, 8, 7, 87, 0, vehicle, uh, 04. There it is not capital goods, but it is capital goods for a service provider who is in renting business. So, specified service. So, because he is in renting business, that is capital goods for him. And next to carry inputs and capital goods, vehicle used to carry inputs or capital goods by a service provider. Suppose you are a service provider, you are using some vehicles for carrying inputs or capital goods. For example, Shamiana, Pandal Shamiana service or out, outdoor catering services. So, for outdoor catering services, outdoor catering he has to carry all the equipments to a, a spot, picnic spot. Say for example, there is a picnic, Chartered Accountants Association conducted a picnic, he is conducting a picnic outside the city, say at some 30 kilometers outside the city and they say they contacted a catering caterer and you provide meals, tea, coffee, meals and there is a contract for say 150 people with families, the chartered accountants went, 150 people. For 150 people, he has to cook the food and ready food and he has to serve there. He will carry people, of course, for carrying people that is not eligible. Of course, if you carry inputs or capital goods, Pandal Shamiana. So, you have to take all the equipment to the spot and where you have to arrange Pandal Shamiana, Mantap, etcetera, etcetera. You are carrying. So, if a service provider is carrying inputs or capital goods through these vehicles, that vehicle is capital goods for the service provider, provided that it is registered in his name. Of course, third I need not tell you very easy, you can easily catch that is courier services. For courier services, vehicles are used. For a courier service uh, provider, the vehicle is a capital goods if it is written in his name. You got it? So, these are the three things. And what about uh, part C? This is about passengers, buses. it is about carrying passengers, carrying persons. It says the language is motor vehicle designed to carry passengers, designed to carry passengers, buses, etcetera, etcetera, designed to carry passengers including their chassis registered in the name of the service provider when used for providing output service of transport of passengers, renting, renting is here also, it is renting. If, the, if it is used for renting, okay. if it is used for renting, that is done and plus automatically or to carry passengers, you are running a bus and you are carrying passengers. So, transport of passengers and for renting and importing driving skills, motor driving schools. So, motor driving schools, motor driving schools, say you will be learning driving, you will join a driving school. So, a motor driving skill is using, school, school is, motor driving school is using the vehicles to teach, to give training in driving then that is also that also qualifies because it carries passengers it may be a car even so four wheeler is not eligible because four wheeler is not capital goods under because it falls under chapter 8702 but that four wheeler is capital goods that cab is that four wheeler is capital goods for a motor driving school if the four wheeler is used to carry passengers just, just like a rent a cab service or radio taxi service, then if it is in your name, if it is registered in your name, it is capital goods for you and obviously, 
you will be getting the invert credit. Okay? 3 plus 3, very easy to remember. So, specified categories of service providers, can you now recall renting in both in both the, in both the cases goods and passengers the renting is there renting purpose means it is capital goods number 2 to carry inputs are capital goods for a service provider here to carry passengers because they that is carrying goods and this is carrying passengers but not all goods you are carrying inputs are capital goods for providing output service it is not transport of goods in fact public transport is is under the negative list okay and here for goods it is courier service that is used for the purpose it purpose for the persons passengers it is a driving school courier and driving school which is somewhat different whereas carrying goods and carrying passengers common ca renting purpose and renting purpose renting for renting for carrying goods there and renting for carrying persons here so for these specified services these service providers can take them as capital goods. For others, no, only for these specified uh, service providers it is capital goods, provided that these vehicles are registered in the name of those these service providers. Registration in their name is compulsory. So, C D is B C is okay and D is simply components and spares of the above. So, D simply says when you talk about, so when you are talking about uh, capital goods and their spares components etcetera. Wherever they are capital goods, their components, spares etcetera, they qualify as capital goods. D, components, spares and accessories of motor vehicles which are capital goods for the SSC. Dumpers and tippers, they are capital goods for everybody, right? Obviously, they are capital goods for everybody. So, their spares and components are automatically capital goods. Suppose, a cab is a motor vehicle, is a, ca a cab is a capital goods for motor driving school, a cab is a mo capital goods for rent a cab service provider or radio taxi service. There automatically, their whatever spares and components they take automatically they qualify, they also qualify as capital goods. Then A, B, C, D. So, I think uh, you are able to get into. So, A 8 items, B C specified services, for these specified services these capital goods will be treated, the motor vehicles will be treated as capital goods. They may be disqualified as capital goods under part A, but they may be capital goods under B and C provided that they satisfy the conditions that are used by specified service providers for specific purpose. 3 plus 3 already given, renting common carrying goods or carrying passengers common and here courier and there it is driving school that is it. How easy it is you may you might have thought that this is a lengthy one very difficult to definition it is not like that. So, move further let me move further. Okay. But you will get practical questions, just a minute, eh? you will see that. Say, I will put a so few things to try to recapitulate. Uh, first thing is capital goods definition. capital goods. How many parts it is? Four parts. Part A, B, C and D. Okay? B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Simple. In A, B, C, D, you find eight categories. Eight categories. If they used, 
if they are used by manufacturer in factory or outside the factory 1 and 1A one and service provider for service provider simply for providing output service direct use then these are considered as capital goods and used outside the factory may be for electricity generation or for pumping of water which are used captively in the factory or anything used in the factory qualifies even office equipment or appliances they are also capital goods now if the office is attached to the factory but outside the factory they cannot outside the factory no but inside the factory used in the factory maybe in, in with the factory some office is attached so even if they are used in the office they are capital goods and eight categories even then if you want to remember say for example there is a way out how you see p c m p c m p c m r t s v p c m r t s v if you can remember p c m r t s v you try it you can remember in your own way say first one is goods i need not mention all goods in the ch chapters chapter numbers otherwise you can also give some name chapter c ch c for chapters capital equipments c for capital goods chapters having capital goods cpc you can say you can put like this cpc okay cpc first category you break it into break something into pieces and you will remember cpc first one is capital goods specified in the specified chapters but how to remember the chapters sorry so you have to do your own 82 84 85 90 68 04 68 05 and 86 06 92 <laughs> i have also done it and you have to do it no escape because there is no open book, book system so cpc p means pollution control equipment again c means components spares etc of the above first three over and d e f for example sorry e cpc is over uh, next m r t s v m r next put it, take it as m r m r means put it in parts m r molds dies refer uh, fix jigs and fixtures molds molds dies jigs and fixtures m and r r for refractory and refractory materials done refractory I have given you the story steel plant side walls you will remember mr means molds dies jigs and fixtures r for refractory and refractory materials mr is over cpc mr is over right and tsv tsv t for tubes pipes and fittings s for storage tank okay v for vehicles other than again 234 other than 87 02 03 04 and 11 234 11 okay 234 11 you have to remember 2 what is 2 what is 3 just 2 buses big vehicles for carrying passengers uh, persons whereas 3 is for less than 10 percent not more than 10 persons and to carry goods it is 4 and 11 2 wheelers and 11 means 1 1 2 wheelers 11 is 1 1 na, 2 wheelers it represents 2 wheelers that is motor cycles you can say 2 wheelers motor cycle means 2 wheelers that is it they are not capital goods but dumpers and tippers can be capital goods so these are capital goods other than 2 3 4 11 to both a first a category that is what you have to remember b c d very easy b already you know so what is there for b b and c b for goods 
goods carrying vehicles and C for goods vehicles carrying persons, passengers we can say. C for passengers and B for goods and D for their spares and components, spares and components. Wherever a particular item is capital goods and its spares and components are capital goods, that is it A, B, C, D. And in B, C you know what is common, renting is common both, both ways, carrying inputs are capital goods by service provider here and carrying passengers is there in C and here it is courier service in, in the case of goods whereas it is driving school in the case of part C for persons, that is it, how easy it is, you got it, I believe. So, once you go through the video or sometimes you may have to go once again and you got the definition of capital goods. Now, you go to the original definition, look at the book from the material you read. If you read, you will find yes, yes, I got it, I understand everything because you understand everything. So, by now also you understood everything. Shall I put you a few questions, sir, sir, if I recapitulation, how a question may come. Say for example, I say uh, a manufacturer is using a tippers, manufacturer is using tippers, yeah, please remember this. So, whether these are capital goods or not, yes or no, what is your answer? Say falling under say chapter 8704, then tell me what is your answer? What is your answer? Yes or no? I am not able to hear you. It is yes, because dumpers, are tip, dumpers and tippers are capital goods, whoever uses it, because it is under part A, part A is common to both. So, second question, a manufacturer is using a vehicle for carrying raw material, because he uses raw material, he processes them, whether it is yes or no. Is it capital goods for him? What is your answer? So, if you answer this question, your maturity level is very high. Yes or no? The answer is no. Why this is no? Because you know for specified service providers under category B, part B, this is capital goods, not for manufacturer. For manufacturer only those, but this falls under carrying goods means this falls under 8704. 8704 vehicles for carrying goods. So, if you if a manufacturer uses it, he is not eligible. If his service provider uses his his service, his activity is carrying goods. His activity is providing service, and for providing such service, he needs the vehicles just like catering, outdoor caterer or service provider of Pandal Shamiana, Mantap Keeper, etc. Yes, he needs to carry the equipment from one place to another place or sometimes material, yes, got it? And third question, in this third question I say air conditioner used in office of costing department used in office of costing department or accounts department, accounts uh, attached to the factory, attached to the factory. And second, a AC air conditioner used in MD's office, managing director's office. 
located one kilometer away from factory. So, come on, whether it is capital goods or not. AC used in office of costing department or accounts department attached to the factory. So, this is yes. Now, used in the factory it is enough. Used in the factory means anything attached to the factory, even if it is some office is attached to the factory, costing clerk is there, data entry operator is there, he is sitting in, in, an, in an office, office attached to the factory, whatever goods, whatever capital equipment that is used, it qualifies. Whereas, MD office situated away from factory, no, because it is not attached to the factory, it is away from factory. So, this is not capital goods. So, like this use goods used for pumping of water, that pumping of water is 5 kilometers away from the factory, but the water is brought to the factory and used in the factory, yes. Suppose the water is not used in the factory, it is not capital goods. Electricity is generated outside the factory, where the company has uh, a power plant outside the factory, but some, some capital goods have been used there, taken over there and used there. Yes, if the electricity is drawn by the factory for its use, if the electricity is not used in the factory, then it is not eligible as capital goods. Hmm? Sometimes goods may be used outside the factory, Some say for example, Vikram cements, there was a very big case, Supreme Court, Vikram cements. So, in the Vikram cements case, the company was using uh, lime um, detonators, etcetera, etcetera. Uh, in the mines to get the limestone, because limestone is a major raw material for cement industries, cement production. So, to produce limes, limestone in the mines, they are using some equipment and they are using some material also, detonators, etcetera, etcetera, blasting material or explosive material. All, the, all are eligible, even though they are not used in the factory, because the notional extension theory the factory is extended to mines also, provided the mines are captive mines. Captive mines means whatever is produced in the mines that is being brought to the factory and used in the factory or rope wire away from the factory. Yes, capital goods if that is used for the purpose of factory, it may not be inside the factory, but outside the factory rope wire, yes, to carry goods. So, rope wire qualifies as capital goods, need not necessarily be inside the factory, but attached to the factory. The concept of factory is extended to a little away, that is called notional extension theory. Okay? So, I think the definition of capital goods you are able to, you are thorough with. Then we will move to the other definition that is input that is equally important. Okay? We will come back by all the best.